Okay, so uh, a bit of um, sharing on accident cause, right? So, if you happen to have accident, there will be cause. Yeah? But not all accident will cost you. Not all accident incur cost, causing you to pay <coughs> money yeah, for things. If you happen to cut your fingers, for example, and yeah, like the last time that we have a live session, somebody wrote in the chat room saying that, okay, cut fingers during cooking. And that's considered as accident, but it doesn't, you know, incur any kind of cost, lah, yeah? except that maybe you suffer a little bit and then maybe your work, you know, your cooking is somehow stopped temporarily yeah, until you... Uh, patch your injuries and then you can cook again that's all eh? you don't your money is still in your pocket nothing happens other than that yeah? but if it involves accident that involves a major a major accident a big accident that results in death or injury or destructions of um, company assets or suffering uh, of the family it's the ones eh, that usually incur a lot of costs. Yeah? So cost is defined differently from different authors. Okay? And sometimes you can get confused between cost and loss. So I hope within this um, lecture, you know, I will make it clear about what is my expectation. So cost is not a liability only to the company and to say if, if you happen to be involved in an accident it will not only cost you eh, that you have to be paying things but also other people too eh. <clears throat> in the context of a organization a company whenever an accident happen you know sometimes it is so major so severe that it also create unnecessary cost to the victim okay or the victim's family and also to the community uh, that happen to be nearby the accident site and also the government. Uh, you will find out later when you research your disaster case that you know government will also be involved uh, in <coughs> mitigating uh, the impact of the accident untuk mengurangkan kesan ataupun impact daripada uh, kemalangan itu terhadap masyarakat setempat. Uh. But um, <clears throat> within this context, we don't focus on what other people have to pay. Eh? So the job of uh, people, of those, those who have to present on accident costs, okay, they need to focus only what comes out from the company's pocket, eh? the money coming from the company only. Yeah? So don't put in any content that relates come family have to pay so much, government have to pay so much, NGO have to pay so much, no. Eh? The focus is only what comes out from the pocket of the company, eh, from the company's money. Uh, because um, accident started from the company. So it's good to see the perspective of you know, the impact of accident to the company. Eh, because they are the one who started the accident in the first place. Okay, in general... <coughs> um, we can see a uh, three three type of cost. Right? Number one would be the expenses, yeah? money spent, lah, duit keluar, yeah? money coming out from pocket hard cash. Yeah? Uh, what you have, lah, what you have in in your possession, yeah? or in your bank, or kept in your company as a cash. Yeah? And you are you taking it from the operating budget. Usually, you have you know um, provision of money, a budget of money to pay for operation. And usually, you have to take some of it to pay for for accident, for example. Or sometimes, if it's so big, you know, you have to take it from your profit. So your profit margin will be smaller. Eh? Untung patutnya banyak ni, tapi jadi sikit sebab sebagian besarnya kena bayar. Uh, macam-macam benda lah yang terjadi akibat kemalangan <coughs> to cover expenses as a result of accident that's number one so this is the main focus of this topic eh. number two is loss of future income and not getting potential money eh. so I give you uh, an example what does it mean by loss of future income eh? 
So maybe you can read it later. Yeah? Because accident will also cause that. Yeah? For example, if you are a grab driver, okay, you make money quite a lot from you know driving uh, for grab. Yeah? But suddenly you got involved in an accident. So the car is a total wreck. It cannot be used anymore. So if you earn like 3,000 every month as a grab driver because of the accident, you have no car, you lost 3,000 a month lah, every month until you get a new car. Lah. Okay, that is a loss of future income. So those are some of the things uh, yang, yang, yang that, that can make um, a company go bankrupt. Lah, eh? <coughs> Gulung tika. Or loss of paid money. Eh? Uh, I mean, to say you have exchanged that hard cash eh? money for something else, for machine, for assets. Okay, and then that assets was involved in an accident, for example, destroyed in a fire. Yeah? So basically what is being burned is basically a, a, a value of equivalent to your money. Lah. Yeah? You already paid for that machine. Now that machine already you know, burn, uh, total damage, cannot be used anymore. So, um, there's money flies. Lah, huh? So, you lose what you have paid. Yeah. So, in the disaster that you have chosen, you have to find out what are the, the costs huh, that has to be <coughs> that becomes a burden to the company. And this cost is um, divided into two big categories. One is direct cost, then the another one is the indirect cost. Eh? <coughs> so this is the definition that you must use. Okay, Payment made by the organization eh? and or the insurance company. Sometimes when the company uh, subscribe insurance, so the money is paid by the insurance and not the company. So <coughs> either way, you have to you know take it into account lah. You must be catatkan walaupun yang membayar itu adalah company insurance, tapi itu you can ambil kira juga lah dalam you punya uh, penyeraan lah. Uh, on behalf of the organisation, not by other part parties yang such as victims, family, the government or community to parties affected by the accident and organizations that render services to the disease, the injured and to the accident site. Yeah. So your job is to find out exactly what are the costs. Okay, you cannot just list down okay, payment to the victim's family. Yeah, you need to quantify. And that's your job. Okay. If there is information about how much, then you can just extract extract that information from the literature, okay, and put it into your presentation material. But if you cannot find the information, then you have to estimate. You estimate. You have to calculate yeah, how much uh, that the company would. Uh, need to pay eh, for a certain item, a uh, cost item. To to understand better about what is direct cost, direct cost are, the relate, are related to company money spent on the immediate outcome of an accident. Eh, immediate. So whenever an accident happens, what is the immediate outcome? Okay, there might be death in, involved. People died because of the accident, fire or explosion yeah, or release of dangerous or toxic chemicals there must be an injury right <clears throat> so people will, will die or people will get injured and people will be sick okay and there will be a lot of waste okay rubble yeah, spillage and also contamination and also involve if somebody is trapped yeah, just right after the the accident um, because of the fire explosion then there must be a rescue efforts organized yeah? sometimes you have to bring in um, a helicopter or bring in special equipment you know, to extract people out of the rubble so these are direct costs that is related directly to the uh, accident event 
<coughs> first item would be payment made for management of victims okay immediately after the accident there will be victims some of them die some of them injured some of them sick yeah so you need to calculate what are the money being spent by the company for search and rescue effort and how much do they pay for you know sometimes they need to bring in experts yeah, from international agency you know the all of this cost is you know is paid by the company actually and how much the company have to pay for ambulance services and yeah, medical evacuation yeah, sometimes um, you know when the accident happened uh, in the middle of the sea middle of the ocean like the uh, oil and gas rig yeah, oil platform so you know ambulance cannot uh, uh, drive over water eh, so they need to um, um, hire helicopters eh, medivac to fly into the oil platform eh, to send victims to hospital because there is no hospital on board you know, on top of a uh, oil platform hospital is on land so <coughs> that will that will incur of course and first responder fees and to say the, the the nurses the doctors maybe the firemen firefighters rescuers you know service charge and everything <coughs> and for the people who are injured okay what is the cost of their treatment yeah Surgery, consultation, medicine, rehabilitation, body part replacement. Sometimes when you read a literature, they put there as a lump sum. Eh? They said about this, they, they called it uh, hospitalization cost in one amount. Then you can use lah. Eh? So that uh, this guide is to make sure that whenever you read something from the 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 literature. And you can take it lah. Eh? You can take it out and put it into your your presentation material. But if you don't find anything, then you have to estimate. Eh? And then okay, funeral arrangement. Okay, company have to pay for funeral arrangement for the dead. Sometimes you know if the victims is unrecognizable unrec eh? because of the big fire explosion, so there is only pieces of of the body you know there is no face no body you know only piece of skin and piece of teeth so they need to send that for dna testing to identify who is the victim so that also <coughs> will incur costs you know if the victims family spend money you don't count it eh? yeah, because it is not a direct cost to the company if the government spend money, also don't count it in, in your presentation material because it is a direct cost to the government, eh, not to the company. Okay, so be very clear. Make sure that you know when you read that the cost is paid by who. Yeah? If it's paid by the company, then you put it in. If it's paid by the government, don't put it in. If it's paid by the family, you know, don't put it in. But you need to um, realize eh, that company also spend a lot of money. Uh, no, no. Victims, eh, family also spend a lot of money. And also the government eh, spend a lot of money if a disaster happens. Okay. <clears throat> when there is an accident, you have to, you know, there's a lot of waste. Eh? A good building turns into dust, into debris, yeah, into a pile of bricks. So you need to clear the site, yeah, because you know you, it's it's uh, something that people don't want to see, lah. Huh? It's, it's ugly. Yeah? So company need to send money to spend money to to call in the external contractors, and they will you know clear away all the destroyed structure, huh? the damaged machinery. Okay, site clearing, okay, already done. And then decontaminate. Eh, sometimes uh, spillage happens or, you know, uh, very dangerous chemical is spilled or released. So it contaminates uh, a lot of <coughs> the surrounding areas on, on the soil, on the trees, on the houses of people. 
So company need to pay for special services to the com decontaminate uh, the accident site uh, within the accident site and the surrounding area so that it will no longer harm people in the long run uh, dalam masa jangka, jangka masa panjang so that is the responsibility of the company uh, to contain uh, to contain the contamination and also involve the decommissioning uh, sometimes uh, certain parts of the operation is destroyed uh, because of accident but you know the other parts is maybe linked uh, with the, that area that is affected so they need to decommission decommission means to say to stop the operation eh? so they will have to push the stop button okay it's more complicated than that lah eh? you know, they have to uh, close the valve there close the valve here and then uh, put in a lot of things you know uh, to run emergency procedure to uh, stop the operation so that will also involve some cost. Okay, <clears throat> resettlement of affected community. Sometimes the area where the disaster happened, you know, it happens to have a community surrounding that area. Yeah, maybe hmm. it's near, maybe it's a bit far, but you know, if there is a risk involved, meaning to say they may be affected by what happened at the site, the disaster. So company need to spend money to engage people to relocate yeah, the community there to another place which is safer lah. Yeah. It might be closer or it might be further away uh, but you know they have to pay for all the expenses yeah, for uh, the services of movers, yeah, for temporary lodging in motel or hotel or wherever it is for food and beverage, maybe temporary tent whatsoever and all the travelling expenses. <coughs> okay, compensation. Yeah. So within this context, compensation means paying money to victims or family of the disease yeah, in recognition of loss, suffering or injury. So this is a normal practice for company who who's who caused the accident uh, to pay compensation for people who are affected uh, by by the accident and a uh, company might also have to pay compensation for collateral damage uh, collateral collateral damage mean to say the damage that goes beyond the borders uh, of the company uh. sometimes an explosion is so big that all the debris and projectile goes beyond the border of the company, beyond the gates, beyond the wall and causing damage to nearby houses, nearby factories, nearby shops and the company have to pay them eh, to, for compensation for damages lah, eh, so that they can recover. Eh. Okay, <clears throat> so that is uh, the direct cost. And now we go on to the next part will be the indirect cost. Yeah. So what is indirect cost? Uh, indirect cost is payment. Yeah. Whether it's lump sum, you know, you pay like a big sum of money or perpetual. Perpetual means you pay a bit by bit uh, over a long period of time uh, made by the organization uh, in the absence uh, of manpower. Uh, yang mati, yang sakit, yang cedera, mesti dia akan cuti sakit. Yeah. Yang mati dah tentunya hilang terus lah Yang sakit, you know, dia akan cuti sakit Ada yang sekejap, ada yang panjang yeah. So, bila when the manpower is absent yeah, They are in the hospital and such So, uh, what are the costs? Yeah, what are the costs involved? Yeah. Uh, or, the absence of asset yeah, Affected by the accident yeah, not only the accident affect um, the people, uh, it also affect the assets, uh, the things, the plant, the equipment, the tools, the machinery. And, you know, when the tools and equipment plant is destroyed, it's not there anymore for you to use. So what are the costs involved? And also payment made or expenses yeah, in relation to uh, legal demands uh, made by affected parties. So within this definition, scope of definition, what are the costs involved? Uh, so we're going to look at some of it. Basically all of it, uh, I put all so that it's easy for you to refer. 
So usually what happen after big accident is people will start sniffing around lah. Eh, we we kepochi lah. We'll start to you know want to know more, be curious about what really happened. Eh. So there will be investigation costs. Eh. The usual investigation cost usually comes from the public officers lah, the public authority. Eh. Um, in this case, would be in Malaysia's case, would be DOSH lah, Department of Occupational Safety and Health. Uh, the range of course depends on whether the accident site is given stop work order or not. Eh? I mean to say DOSH officers have the power to seal or close the operation of the company. For example, if the company of operate a factory, so a big accident happened in the factory, so DOSH has the power to close temporarily eh, the operation. So stop work. Eh? Nothing can run over a period of time, okay? So, if that happens, then the company will incur more costs, right? So, what are the investigation costs involved? Would be um, payment for the services of the third-party investigators. Uh, sometimes, DOSH officers, they, they don't normally charge you, lah, they do it using uh, government's money lah, eh? but sometimes when the accident is so big, severe, major and involving very special, you know, chemical or process like in the oil and gas, you know, so they need to hire third party investigators lah, some, some you know, con uh, experts from companies, eh? not from the government. So when experts from private company comes in, the company will pay for the cost. Yeah? So their, their, their wages, you know, their expenses and everything. And sometimes company, you know, um, a very, you know, a viral accident, for example, you know, suka accident recently yeah, about, um, you know, the moving gantry comes crashing down and kills, you know, three China citizens. So it attracts a lot of media attention yeah? so there's a lot of um, journalists yeah? investigative journalists wants to know what happened <coughs> so company have to spend money to organize you know press conference press release press statement and you know to um, to reassure the public about what really happened that they have they are taking steps to ensure safety of the public blah 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 so that activity will also cost money, right? So this is one of one of the biggest cost ticket, cost item, loss of productivity. What does it mean by loss of productivity in terms of money? <clears throat> so when machine equipment factory or stock, when you say your inventory is lost to the accident, you, know, you keep like uh, twenty ton of your products in a store and then that store you know was destroyed by fires yeah? and of course the inventory will also be destroyed yeah? so the company is incapable yeah, whether it's short or long term to service the order of the clients yeah? so that 20 ton of products is to be shipped for example uh, to Japan uh, because of you know a company from Japan ordered it but before they are able to ship it, something happened, uh, fire happened, and all of the, the 20 tons of products all gone. <clears throat> so what would happen next? Eh? Company might have to pay higher price to source similar products from competitors. Eh? So they might hire a competitor factory that produce the same product to produce the product on their behalf. And then, of course, uh, that factory will charge double or triple lah, because they know you are desperate yeah? uh, and then they, they will produce it to you so that you can send that product to your clients yeah? because you have a you know contractual obligation with your client you need to send the products on time yeah? in, in certain quantity so you don't want to you know <coughs> um, have a bad relationship with that client because they are a big client to you so you have to do whatever you must lah to ensure that your client gets that product although it's 
already lost in the fire. <coughs> so this is a big cost uh, to a company. And a lot of companies just, just declared that they are incapable of, of servicing that order. order uh, so the client will just uh, terminate the contract and maybe the company have to pay penalties. But, you know, that would that would be the death of the company. Lah. So if they want to still survive in the business, they you know need to spend double or triple to make sure that, that the client is happy, <coughs> regardless of what happened to you. Okay, new asset cost. So whenever accident happen, fire, explosion, sometimes you know your assets, the, the things, the, the equipment, the tools that you use is uh, total loss, eh? gone. So you need to buy a replacement because you need to be productive. Eh? Um, so that is a cost. Eh? You wreck your car. Of course, you cannot use your car. Um, but you need the car eh, for for to, to become, to, you know, to continue your, your um, career as a grab driver. So, you need to buy a car <laughs> so that you can continue to be productive but you still have a choice not to use the car. You might say to Grab that, okay, temporarily I will stop be, uh, being a Grab driver. <coughs> so, you will be idle lah. Eh, tak buat apa-apa lah for some time. So, why this asset cost is a, is a indirect? Because <coughs> whenever you lose your car, you lose your machine in accident, so you will not automatically buy that machine eh, because of the accident. You only buy a, a machine because you need to be productive. So the reason you buy is to be productive, eh, not because of the accident. <coughs> okay, repair cost. So I think this is something that Najiha raised just now before this. Of course, if sometimes it's not a total wreck, eh, so whatever happened in the accident is not a total wreck and maybe it can still be used. Just a minor damage that you can still repair. Okay. Uh, so you can, you have to send it for repair so as you cannot use it. Right. Same goes like your car lah. Sometimes it's not a total wreck when you are involved in a road collision. Maybe, you know, one or two tires, you know, is damaged. So you just change that, you know. <coughs> tire system only and not the whole car yeah, but you know to pay for the repair would cost you a lot uh. Uh, usually the insurance will pay it for you uh, but if you forgot to pay for the insurance then you have to pay from your own money uh. and uh, it's it's really a lot uh, depending on the on the brand of your car uh. so if you uh, have if you use Axia or Kanchil then it's it's gonna be cheaper lah, huh? but if you use like Ferrari, and then it will cost you like uh, five digits huh? <clears throat> and sometimes if the machine that you use is very custom highly custom, you know, the only your factory use that kind of machine that you uh, hire um, factory from the US to produce it uh, to, to, make it, to make it so when that machine is damaged because of accident <clears throat> so you cannot just buy that parts from a local factory or some from some from the hardware company eh, because it's custom made. So you have to contact the factory from the US and that factory need to you know produce similar parts because they don't usually keep it in their inventory eh, because it's custom. And so that will be will increase the cost higher. Eh? <clears throat> the time eh, that you need to wait the cost that you have to pay for them to reproduce the parts of the machine and then the cost that you have to pay to fly that that parts eh, from US to Malaysia so it's a lot yeah? <clears throat> and of course you will incur productivity cost lah, eh, loss of productivity okay <clears throat> there might be some rental cost eh, because you know Sometimes you don't have to buy new assets. Sometimes you don't have to uh, repair it. Yeah? But 
you know in the period that you repair the existing assets you know but you need to be productive you need to produce your your output yeah, to service the client so you might have to rent machines or so assets in order to be productive <coughs> the same goes if you are a great driver and then your car involve a road collision and then you send the car for repairs and the, the workshop will take around two months to repair it if your insurance company pay usually be longer three to four months so within that period of time two three to four months you need to you know have another car because that's your only income so one of the ways to do it is to rent a car but to rent a car on monthly basis on daily basis will be will cost you a lot yeah, on monthly basis be lesser but still you know sometimes you have to pay more than what you earn uh, in certain cases Okay, we just paid for absent worker. If you have a worker, for example, working, you know, your staff, five of your staff, and then all of them are involved in accident, so you will lose all five. Okay, but because their contract with you are permanent contract, right, and they are allowed, you know, sick pays, so you have to continue to pay them salary, you know, although they are staying at home or staying in the hospital right so that will be cost to you although you are paying you know like normal normally you may, of course you have to pay them whether they are there or not but uh, this time around you know it's it's it must be counted because they are sick yeah they are in the hospital so you are paying for nothing lah no workers you have workers but you pay salary but they are not there to be productive <coughs> and because of that you have to replace. Yeah? That's the only five workers you have. And you need to have five more uh, to produce the output, to produce the services that your company do. So you need to replace them. Uh, so you might have to hire a temporary worker and you have to pay their wages. So during that month, you have to pay double wages, uh, double salary. One salary goes to the people who are hospitalized one salary goes to the temporary worker. Instead of paying 3,000, you are paying 6,000. So, double the cost. <clears throat> or sometimes you have extra people, you know, you have six staff and three of them injured and the, the three healthy staff, we need to do the job of six workers. So, sometimes, you know, they ask for extra allowance, you know, or overtime payment, so that is the extra thing that the company have to pay. Service of loan of destroyed assets. Um, a lot of the company, especially small companies, they use loan uh, to buy assets, uh, machines, tool, equipment. So when the machines, the assets is totally damaged, you still have to pay the loan. Uh? So that is same like salary for sick pay eh, sick workers so you pay are paying for nothing the the asset is not there but you still pays eh? so if you buy another asset using loan then you are paying for two loans one for loans for the destroyed asset one for the loan for the new assets so instead of paying paying for example 3000 month you are paying 6000 eh? So, so far, um, accident should be prevented lah, because if it happens, you know, you, companies will have big headaches and a lot of costs that they have to cover and some of them have to go bankrupt, you know, gulung tikar and then, uh, you know, uh, a lot of consequences lah. Alright, this is also a big item, a big cost item civil suit okay. some families who are knowledgeable of you know suing people yeah. uh, might decide to hire some lawyers and sue you uh, sue the company so when the company agrees <coughs> with the suit 
So court will ask for a lot of money eh, from the company to be paid to the victim's family, right? So you will find this a lot eh, in your disaster cases, right? Uh, some company they just pay and because they don't want to you know go through the lengthy legal battle eh? but some company they want to go through the legal process because they think that this the suit is 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 uh, you know it's wrong for example so for the company to go through the legal battle the legal process is expensive eh? because company have to pay for lawyers yeah company you will usually pay not only for one sometimes a team of lawyers five to ten lawyers so you have to pay uh, or you have to pay for the court processes <coughs> yeah, sometimes when the court the judge uh, thinks that you need to be uh, to you have to go into the lockup uh, you need to pay for bail and then the traveling for many years of you know for sometimes the legal process takes uh, many years so traveling to court you know every now and then payment for witness expenses you know? so it's a lot and then at the end of the legal process and the judge con uh, decide that you know it's, it's the companies that is wrong okay? so so the court will order the company to pay for fines as stated in the law okay <clears throat> so then you have to pay fines eh, on top of the civil suit eh, the suit the sue from the company now it's fine eh, because you are breaching uh, after the investigation when the investigator present their reports they might find that you breach some kind of law you know the law says you have to do this but you don't do it and because of that the accident happened then you know, um, the court will ask you to pay for the fines or penalties. But currently in Malaysia, the fines is quite low. Uh, maximum will be 50,000. <coughs> but in the future, it will be raised uh, up to half a million. Uh. So it will be more costly. Okay. There are also times when the court will order you for... Um, as a consequences of the accident, we will order the company to do a lot of things. Yeah? Uh, they have to pay for safety improvement at other sites. For example, your company have many sites. Uh, one in Johor, one in Sarawak, one in Sabah. It's all similar. It's all like chemical factory. It's all the same. But <clears throat> the one in Johor is destroyed by explosion, for example. So the court, the court orders will order your company, the company to pay for uh, safety improvement, eh? safety improvement in your site at Sarawak and Sabah. Eh? So you have to spend money for, you know, keeping your site in Sarawak and Sabah safe. Yeah? And pay money to charities, pay money to build memorials, pay money for research pay money to operate clinics and hospital that treat victims especially when it involves radiation or you know very toxic material okay lastly increase in insurance premium after the accident so if your company happen to subscribe to an insurance the insurance will pay for a lot of the, the things that we have discussed but not all eh? <coughs> and in return, the, the insurance will charge you more eh, for the premium. So the premium is like double or triple higher that you have to pay every year. Eh? Sometimes it will come to millions. Eh? So before the accident, you only pay like 50,000. But after the accident, you have to pay like 250,000. So increase 200,000 every year you have to pay. So, uh, you know, that will take out a, a lot of portion eh, from the operation budget or from the profit the the, the thing here is uh, what i want to highlight is that sometimes company always forgets that accident costs a lot eh? so if they have this awareness of what sums of money that they have to pay if a big accident happen 
<coughs> you know, maybe that will raise awareness from the people who owns the company to to invest in safety lah. So safety is not a cost actually. Eh. Safety is investment, is pelaburan. Eh. Buat pelaburan je ialah pelaburan untuk mengelakkan perbelanjaan yang lebih banyak pada masa hadapan. Eh. The investment is to you know safeguard the company from being bankrupt eh, because of uh, what can happen in the future that is the big accident eh. so we can we cannot predict the future eh. so if big accident can happen then it is uh, it, it makes sense eh, to invest eh, in safety to protect from having big accident in the future <coughs> There's a question here. Is there any probability that company to lay off employee to cut cost after accident? <coughs> you know, uh, the labor law of many countries um, do not allow for that to happen. Yeah? Unless if the employee that you you hire is is illegal, yeah? illegal. Yeah. So if you hire illegal workers, then usually they can just throw them away yeah, because there is no contract, no whatsoever, no law to protect them. But if you are hired legally yeah, according to the Employment Act, you cannot be fired yeah, because of the accident. Yeah. You can only be fired if you uh, if you uh you you do some kind of misconduct lah eh? or criminal activities not because of accident that might be uh, a lot of the times not not it's not because of the workers fault 